Welcome to my new studio. Let me give you a little tour of the studio before I start moving in. These are my two west-facing windows. They let in a lot of light in the afternoon. Here's one corner. Here's the other corner. This corner has an AC unit, and then that corner has a door, which I go in and out of. And that's my new studio! A lot of you are new viewers, so hello! I wasn't always a full-time artist, and to be honest, having the studio right now feels very surreal. I started this channel when I was still in school, and then I worked two years full-time in insurance marketing while doing my art business on the side, until eventually I was able to quit my full-time job and do art full-time. And I feel so lucky that I'm able to do that and able to be in this space right now. It is such a beautiful space of like... In disbelief so i felt like i'm long overdue for a q a video I figured why don't i answer some of your questions while i move into the new studio you all sent in a ton of questions over on instagram my instagram is by katie Mai, by the way and that is where i post all my art so go follow me on there and while you're at it if you'd like to subscribe to my channel to follow along this new chapter in my art journey feel free to do that no pressure the only thing i was planning to do today was block out where i want to put all my furniture but i realized i forgot a measuring tape which was like the second most important thing i needed so i'm just gonna estimate how big everything is so we'll see how it goes and let's start the q a off with a little bit of an introduction of who i am my name is katie mai mai is my middle name and i'm a 23 year old illustrator living in philadelphia you are curious on whether i went to art school and yes i kind of did i went to my state school in new jersey where i have two degrees i have a bachelor's of science in psychology and i have a bachelor of arts in visual arts i was in an arts program but it wasn't a fancy bfa program or anything and i would consider myself to be mostly self-taught because a lot of my classes took place during the pandemic. So I feel like I didn't get the full experience of being in art school. Tomorrow, I need to bring a broom and a vacuum because how nasty it is down here. Yeah, this place needs a little bit of a clean. There's like dead leaves and stuff. And then a little bit about the studio itself. I started my art business in my bedroom, then I moved to my college bedroom, and then I moved to the bedroom I'm in now. And Three-ish years later, I am now in this studio. I got the studio, I emailed every single property manager and studio building in my area, and they all got back to me, and I asked them if they had anything open in summer. Surprisingly, the space was open in mid-July. Craigslist is also a really great place to look, just be careful. Why I decided to get a new space, I was sick and tired of working in my room, and I just wanted to go outside and go to a separate space to separate work and my personal life. I started noticing that I was growing out of my bedroom office. I didn't have enough desk space to work on big illustrations. I needed a designated space to work on editing videos, to pack orders, to put my inventory. Like my parents' room was starting to fill up with all my boxes and I know they were getting sick of living amongst boxes. Yeah, I realized um, when you're an artist and have a small business, you start accumulating a lot of shit and you need room for it. Everything here is pretty much packed up. Say goodbye to my bedroom art studio. Let's do another question before we go. Do you know you wanted to pursue art? At what point did you realize I want to do this for the rest of my life? Yeah, I found um, a couple years ago, I found my diary from when I was five and it said, and I quote, I would be delighted to be an artist. I had no idea that I wrote that when I was so young because I think throughout my teenage years a lot of people told me like I wouldn't be able to be an artist like with all those thoughts in my head I was like okay I guess I have to find another career but whenever someone would ask me throughout my teenage years what I wanted to do I would say I have no idea and I guess it wasn't until the last couple years where I realized like I do actually want to be an artist for the rest of my life and for the first time it was actually a viable option and here we are just finding that diary entry from when I was five like just solidified that this is the right thing I should be doing in my life. All right, it's time to start cleaning. I have the Asian household brew. <laughs> I'm gonna start sweeping. How's your life been since leaving your nine to five? 
messy, disorganized, but also like very fun and freeing. I think is how I would describe it. Yeah, quitting full time also coincided with like a lot of other things in my personal life that I have been worrying about. So it hasn't feel like I've started my new illustration job yet. So I'll check back in with you once I get everything together. Anything about being employed versus self-employed. I kind of miss the structure. I miss having coworkers that I could talk to, and I obviously miss like the benefits, like having a 401k retirement plan and like health benefits. Being self-employed obviously comes with its own challenges, but yeah, I love the flexibility. I love being my own boss and just you know having time for my life now. I think the grass always seems greener when you're on one side versus the other. Each has their pros and their cons really, like it's just really up to you and what you make of it. Mm, so good. Put a little banana pepper right here. Perfect bite. Mm. This elevator is very scary. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Meet you up there. Hi. <laughs> How's your trip? stuff next question uh, has organizing your workload been different now that you're self-employed how do you balance both yeah, um, for organization, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> no organization has been taking place at all. Some days I wake up at like 2 p.m. It's because I don't have a routine set for myself yet. I'm hoping with the new studio, I'm able to set a routine for myself and keep organized. For balancing full-time employment while also doing my art business, I was not balancing it. I was working 24-7. And after two years, that took a huge toll on my mental and physical health. Like I would work nine to five and then I would work on my art stuff from like nine to 10 or nine to midnight. And I would just be exhausted doing that every single day. On the weekends, I would work on art and it was just not sustainable in the long run. If you have art as a hobby, I think it would be good. But if you're basically doing art as a second full-time job, there is just like no way to balance it and actually have work-life balance. It might have looked like I was able to balance it, but in reality, no, not really. I'm gonna rebuild my desk right now. How do you deal with creation on a schedule? What if you're on art block? Now I really know myself and I need to give myself enough time. Like usually I'll take whatever time I think it's gonna take and then I double that and usually that's enough time for me. That just means being real with how much I could actually do and like the workload I can manage because before I was like saying yes to everything and then that ended up not working out that well for me uh, because I was just doing too much. I'm just really trying to have a better relationship with work this year and if I'm ever art blocked I feel like the best method for me is to just step away and Go hang out with friends, take a walk, go on like a hike, I don't know, do something that's not art. Okay, um, I'm just gonna try to figure out where everything should go. That one right there is so uneven. I need to put something on the bottom of it so it doesn't wobble all over the place. I'm gonna switch these two.
I really need to figure out where these two cabinets go. Found them on Facebook Marketplace for $40 for the both of them. Like literally such a steal. I've been seeing these go for like up to $300, $400. So I'm really happy I got it. I spray painted it with my dad the other day and I think they came out really nice. And then here are all the cabinets. I took off the handles because I'm going to replace the handle with kind of a funkier handle. And I think I'm going to paint it a different color this part to match the handles but yeah these things are ginormous i don't know where where to even put them another piece of furniture i got is this cabinet from ikea it is like a nice metal cabinet there's like some stuff in there but i found it in the as is section i've been to ikea by the checkout counter at the end where like you get all the stuff there is an as is section with stuff that's marked down. So this might have been like on display or something, but it was discounted for 280 instead of 440. So I grabbed it. It's like a really, really nice piece. How did you overcome fear of what other people might think of your art slash YouTube videos? Fear and anxiety of what other people might think of my YouTube videos definitely kept me from making videos sooner. But now I look back on it and I wish I just started sooner despite those feelings. Yeah, my biggest advice is don't be afraid of what other people think. Like, you're sharing something really cool. It says a lot about them if they're judging you for it, honestly. And TikTok nowadays is so normalized. Like, you see people recording themselves, like, all the time. So it's not as weird as it used to be. Like, I think it's... If I see someone like recording in public, I don't even bat an eye anymore. Like, if you are on the fence about starting your YouTube channel or sharing your art, this is your sign to start, okay? Don't be afraid. You got this. I'm rooting for you, okay? bunch of my old artwork in it and the next question is what is something you would like to tell your younger self about art any one piece of advice say there will be times where you make bad art it's just inevitable it's just inevitable inevitable <laughs> i can't talk um it just happens bad art just happens and I would want to tell myself just to keep pushing through those bad periods and just keep practicing like every single day um, because I think there's periods of time where I just stopped making art because I was like it's not coming out how I want it to look like why is what's in my head not translating onto the page blah 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 but when you think about it you have to practice every single day to get better and when you look back on your artwork like a year or five years ahead you'll see how much you improved. I think the art you make in your teens or even in your 20s isn't going to be the best art you've ever made ever, you know? So I would just say keep going. Um, even now, I have to tell myself that every day, like keep practicing and then in five years, I'll get much better. We're back. It's day three they said how are you going to decorate the studio i can't wait to see as you can see behind me there is a lot of open space right here and i have so so many ideas and i want to show you my mood board that i created with the sponsor of this video milanote milanote is a tool for organizing your creative projects and it's designed to better help you during the early stages of your creative process for illustrators this might look like mood boarding or storyboarding milanote allows you to collect notes images videos tasks and more into one highly customizable board what i did i used their mood board template and there are over 100 other built-in templates available i gathered all my favorite inspo photos ideas and color palettes from the web using their web clipper. It's so easy, you just copy the image address, paste it into your board, and then you can move those images around however you would like. I noticed myself gravitating towards bold colors, like a place with a lot of plants, and some sort of organized chaos. I really want to incorporate all these elements into the design of my studio. That's what I really like about mood boarding, is like you could really see 
what you like and what you don't like. So Milanote is available on your phone so you can add inspiration on the go. So if you're interested in using Milanote for your next creative project, it's free to use. I'll leave the link in my description. my scissors into one of these boxes, so that was really dumb of me. <laughs> because now I don't know how to open these boxes. <laughs> what are the art slash business goals you're looking to accomplish in the new space? My biggest goal is to just make more art. That is 100% why I wanted a space just for that, just for art and my business. Right now I'm in like a little bit of a break with my shot because I want to focus more on illustration for the time being. I will still have a shop update in the next few months. Um, but yeah, I'm going to slow down on shop updates as I work on illustration. Someone asked me what art supplies I used and they're pretty much all in this box. Love hot press watercolor paper. Arches is quite an expensive brand, but I do like this fluid watercolor paper as well. They come in smaller sheets. Uh, for sketchbooks, I have been using the Moleskin Art sketchbooks. I like them. They're okay. They're not like the best quality paper. If I want to do more like water-based medium, I like these Strathmore mixed media sketchbooks. They're really nice. I've gone through like a good amount of them for like everyday sketching i like these i think canson sketchbooks they're just like regular paper but they're good for like pencil sketches pen stuff like that and then for art supplies i love colored pencils so i use derwent colored pencils and i also use prisma colored pencils i find prisma color is a little bit more soft and derwent has a little bit more of a hard texture but that's like pretty much up to your own preference. I like I like watercolor crayons and oil pastels. Like those are nice. And then for painting, oh, pure more colored pencils. I love colored pencils. Really like gouache. That's like my preferred painting medium. I use Holbein acrylic gouache, and I also use Windsor and Newton watercolor gouache. And again, it's up to your preference on whether you like acrylic gouache or watercolor gouache. Watercolor gouache can get reactivated when you use water, kind of like a watercolor. And then acrylic gouache kind of works like acrylics where you can't really change it after you put it down on the paper, but that could be a good or bad thing depending on what you're doing. And these are really cool. I'm so excited. I got this in Vietnam. It was like a bunch of other gouaches because everything was basically 50% off in Vietnam. So this retails for like 200 something here in the US. I don't even think you could get this here in the US yet. And it was around $80 in Vietnam. And it's this beautiful Holbein watercolor set in collaboration with Higuchi Yuko. It's literally stunning. I need to show you. And it is just so beautiful. I'm not a huge watercolor user. I'm not very comfortable with using watercolors, but I'm so excited to test these out. Like the illustrations on them are amazing. Like, look at that. Like, I don't even want to use this. It's so beautiful. Someone asked me what are some of my favorite art books for inspiration and right now I'm like in a picture book era. Like I love looking at different picture books. My favorites are anything from John Classen. Like I love this one and The Rock from the Sky. I just love his style and like how just simple his writing is, but it's just so funny and humorous. Another one I've been liking a lot is this book called Picture Book Makers, and it has the stories and processes of like 14 different illustrators or children's book illustrators. And I don't know, I just love learning about how other artists work. 
Another book I really like is Drawing for Illustration. I'm about halfway through this one. I've also been going through this History of Illustration textbook. It's basically like an art history textbook. I think I am done with moving in for right now. I think most of my stuff, I eventually will need to find better storage solutions for them. So right now I'm not gonna unpack them. So let me show you around. At the door right now, and it looks, it looks so empty. I thought my stuff would fill in the space more, but it still looks very empty. Over here, I'm picturing this corner as like a packing order station. Right here, my friend Ryan is gonna build me a big table. I was trying to measure out how big I want it to be. I think this is a little bit too big. So I think this, this right here is the perfect size for it. It's about four feet by seven feet and it's gonna have a bunch of storage, all that good stuff. So all the packing order supplies will like be in the table. And then I can also do art at the table here. Over here, I'm thinking about doing a huge art supply wall. Like how do you think that would look with all my paints lined up on the boards? Like anything that I would need would be right on this wall here since this isn't brick. I'm able to drill into there. And then moving over here, I have my desk set up right over there for now because I think I'm going to do like a really long table right here. So there's just so much space to work right by the windows because of all the natural light I'm able to film when I'm painting here so that will be really great and then in this corner I'm gonna get like a big painting easel because I want to make bigger paintings I think that'll be really fun and since it's next to the paint wall it'll be easy to grab paints and such over here is my flat file cabinet I have a bunch of my art supplies up there right now because obviously I don't have other places to put them so they're just here right now it looks a little bit messy over here oh and i want to do a like big gallery wall with all the art prints that i've collected over the past couple years mm, these boxes i still have to unpack but we're not going to talk about that yet i think over here will be some sort of like storage or closet closet like i'll do like a fake some sort of curtain i don't know something that looks good but will still have all my boxes and stuff i don't need because i haven't brought any of my t-shirts or inventory here yet and that is like a lot of boxes and i want to hide that because it looks ugly and here is the entryway this will just be more storage i'll probably get like a brita filter or something to put on top of here like tea snacks all that good stuff will be here and i'm thinking maybe like a little couch right here yeah, what do you think? And that is the studio and the end of our questions for today. I am really excited to decorate this space. I think there's just so many possibilities and it might take a minute, but you guys will be with me throughout the whole journey. So yes, if you have any ideas, let me know. And if you're excited to see what the studio will look like in the future, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'm unbelievably excited and I just want to thank everyone for continuing to support me and my art so I'm able to make art in this beautiful space. I'm literally so grateful and it just feels so surreal to be living my dream. So thank you. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.